I don't own a boat. I've never really photographed a boat, but I can give you some advice about photographing a boat. Hey, this is Scott Weinkiff. What's a storyteller with a camera talking about all the things photographers like you and I are thinking about. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question from you, the subscribers. So I got a question from Nancy. She asked, I photographed sailing regattas. I might have pronounced that wrong. I'd love some tips for getting good action photos on the water, especially under cloudy conditions. Now here's the thing. If you're on the water, my answer will be different than if you're off the water. So let's get to this. All right, Nancy. Answering your question is long overdue. I've had it on my list to do. I just haven't had a chance. Now I have a chance. So here we go. Let's get to your question. If you are on the water, the first thing you need to do is to stabilize your camera. If you're leaning on the edge of a boat, you could use your elbows and your legs and stuff to stabilize your camera. You may not have a tripod with you, but please make sure it is strapped to you, whether using a Spider Pro strap, which I highly recommend, or if you are using a neck strap around you very securely. Now I do recommend because you are on something that is moving to use an image stabilizer, a vibration control, a vibration reduction, whatever it's called in your camera, make sure you're using that because even if you're on a tripod or if you're stabilizing yourself, there is this motion up and down going on because you're on moving water. The most important thing you could do is to bump up that ISO because you're about to make your shutter speed extremely fast. If you want to have the boats or the people on the boats to be still and not blurred for motion blur, then you have to, you have no choice but to bump up your shutter speed to be very fast. If you're using a 300 millimeter lens, your shutter speed needs to be at a minimum, at a minimum, one six hundredth of a second. That is the one over six zero zero. Now I recommend going even faster to completely remove any blur if that's what you are intending to do. You might wanna to go to one one thousandth of a second or maybe even a little faster. You could even throw on an ND filter because there's gonna be a lot of reflections from the sun and the boat because most of the boats are white on purpose. You could actually reduce the amount of light coming in so you can speed up the shutter speed if you have to. So if you don't want to mess with the ISO too much, you could start throwing on an ND filter and then cut out some light to speed up the shutter speed even more. Again, this all depends on the situation, on how fast the boats are moving, how fast you are moving, how big the waves are because they're going to be even bigger if there's boats moving, and how bright it is outside. All those different conditions will impact your ISO and your shutter speed. Now, of course, like I said, you wanna make sure your, sh your shutter speed is as fast as possible. I would say that in this case, you probably wanna pay way less attention to the aperture. Sure, if you wanna get a picture of a boat and then another boat behind it and the boat behind it is blurred, you're gonna want a, a lower, a smaller number for your aperture so that you have a shallow depth of field. But again, I would say pay less attention because you're you need to focus more on the composition and your shutter speed. So maybe you need to put, as a test, put your camera on shutter priority, maybe even auto, auto ISO is your first time doing this and let the camera figure out the rest um, and maybe have a, a, an ND filter to screw on for if you need it. So there you go, that is my answer to what you would do if you were on a boat. If you're off the boat, it's gonna be very different. I mean, you're gonna want an even longer lens because the boat's gonna be far out. You might want a 600 millimeter lens, a 1200 millimeter lens, whatever. That means your shutter speed even more. And if you're, if you're on stable ground, you may not need, you might just have a tripod, which means you're not gonna need to stabilize. Everything's different. So just disregard what I just said. And let's just say, uh, your question was when you're on the boat itself. So there you go. If you like this video, click that subscribe button right now and be sure to comment and ask your question so that I can get to it in another episode. My fingers are going crazy today. See you in the next video.